global warming with ever-increasing loadings of particles in the, in the stratosphere, right. we will be heading to a planet with extremely high greenhouse gases and thick stratosphere. Right, 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 right. So what he's saying is if we continue to emit greenhouse gases, okay. that's what's going to stop us. Well, won't we continue to emit greenhouse gases once you put this in place? Because no, this, no, this no. only takes away the effects of the greenhouse gases. Right, right. So, no, right. so nobody's advocating geoengineering uh, instead of mitigation. We're not saying that this is a solution to global warming. We're saying that if things, we, we're saying, all of us are saying we have to do mitigation no matter what. We have to try and stop the mitigation. Aspect. But wouldn't we be saying it louder before we would deploy an experiment that would add pollution to the atmosphere? Why aren't the scientists saying, hey, no matter what, we need to reduce? Like James Hansen. No, we, 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 we all are saying that. But barely. We can't hear it. It's not in the news. In fact, now I'm hearing you saying it's a complimentary program. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Well, maybe you not, but I can find where they're saying no, that it's a complimentary program. No, no, no. Everybody, including Ken Colbert and including David Key, say we have to do mitigation. We have to stop putting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. That's what's causing global warming. Right, I'm hearing and, that from them. And we're concerned about the moral hazard that if people think geoengineering would work, there would be less push to do mitigation. Some people, however, say that if we uh, start doing research on geoengineering and it turns out really scary and people like you oppose it, that might make it seem like there is no solution and so we'll push even harder for mitigation. No, I, I believe there is a solution. That's everybody to tighten up their belts. It sounds That's like alternative to energy do their going to, to solar cell. Absolutely. Shelving technology is known by corporations buying up patents. I mean, what... No, well, th th that's a completely different issue. I, I I have solar panels on my roof. I think. You know, when there's we, we massive have... spraying, solar drops 50 to 30 to 50 percent. That's proven. There we is, have documentation of that. There is no, there is no such that. there is no such thing as massive spraying. There is. We've given you. Uh, then what are the things you're buying? Aluminum, those, barium, chromium, and tree those, bark those, those and water those, samples those are, and soil samples. Where is that coming from? In snowpack. I don't, snow pack. Where I don't, is it coming I don't from? know, but you, there, you have no evidence that it comes yeah. from yeah, the other stuff. Yes, we do. We have U.S. patents and new aircraft that talks about disturbing aluminum oxides, oxides of metals to help reduce global warming. We have U.S. patents and new aircraft. We're finding aluminum, barium, strontium, titanium. People are sick. I'm getting called constantly. Excuse me, excuse me. As, as people a, getting sick. As a, as a scientist, if you're making claims, you need to have the trail of evidence. You need we to have need every point. We need scientists like you to start reading. You, you don't have all these links. You you have different observations, and you're trying to connect them, but there is no evidence it that there's It doesn't mean it's not happening. That's true. That's right. I sat in a park in that basket arrow. And uh, all of a sudden, everybody started coughing there. The kids were running around. They started coughing. I had this thing go up my nose here that I could so, I could hardly stand it up. And then I look up, and we got these chemtrails. You could see the bottom of the damn airplane. Well, there's lots of there's lots of pollution in the troposphere, but you have no evidence that that plane had anything to do with it. Yes, yeah, sir. I don't know where, where, where I don't know where you out. live, but if you live in my neighborhood in Central California, you see these things all over. And you look, see look, these look, look, you see these condensation trails last all day. When you see it, another jet right above it have a contrail this long. Let me explain to you why that is. Uh, when a when a jet plane burns burns jet fuel, it produces carbon dioxide and water vapor. That's what happens when you burn any fossil That's fuel. That's right. He's That's right. And, yeah, I'm just a scientist. Sorry. Uh, and uh, and yeah, you may be. A and and, and uh, sometimes if the if the relative humidity gets over 100 percent, you get. A I know about condensation. I see it on the leaves and trees every morning. No, but the, look, you're not going to tell me that that crap that they're dumping out of those airplanes that I see coming across the sky. You see all these big bags of dirt every damn day. If you and then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, yeah, I know, but. You, I mean, just, you know, that's kind of rude. Uh, if you let me okay, explain sorry, for a little bit, then you can. Uh, at different levels in the atmosphere, there's different amounts of humidity. Different, and if you add a little bit, sometimes it's enough to make a cloud. If another plane is flying at a little bit higher or lower, and that level of the atmosphere is much drier, then the condensation trail will evaporate much more and, quickly. And you're, and you're, let me explain we're why. We're not talking okay. about condensation. Right, why would jet start, stop, start, stop in like five we're seconds, talking four about times? Oh, I want to hear the answer I mean, to that. Oh, oh, yeah. It's clearly spraying. The, the plane is continuously burn, uh, running. Well, These well, aren't normal planes. They're much higher altitude than commercial air traffic. Yeah, I'd like to know how it starts. Oh, you did? It doesn't start and stop. 
The clouds, uh, you well, can see um, and not see, because it's flying through different barium, parts of the atmosphere. It's flying through a place that's dry, or a place that's dry. You need to see that disk before you tell me that, because I can't buy that at all. You need to see that disk. They're flying out of Penal Air Park in Arizona. The trail seemed to start and stop, and most of them start and stop right above populated areas. Do you have any data? Especially overpopulated areas. No, but that, that's just anecdotes. Do you have any... Uh, I've taken How about rainfall coming after with these planes making contrails? We've got chemical tests from rainfall. And so actually, you have... Actually, uh, when, you, when you can see contrails, that means the... And they last longer. That means the atmosphere is more humid. We know and all we're about not talking it's about contrails. We're talking about chemtrails. Yeah, could, could, could I answer your question? Uh, anyway... Yeah, well, if you don't want to listen, uh, you, you asked me you a question. You don't want to listen either. You want to beat us up yeah. with being a scientist. Well, you asked me a question, real. and I just oh, wanted to... Like to have These aren't contrails we're talking about. We are talking about chemical spraying. If, if you... If, 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 when the atmosphere is more humid, that's when the contrails last longer. And that means uh, humid air is coming in and a storm is coming in. A friend of, in Colorado, you're taught to make weather forecasts by when contrails last longer, that means the atmosphere is more humid. Well, and a storm can. is coming, and that's why it rains afterwards, because a storm is coming. Yeah, but we get calls from all over the United States, as though so you're saying it's humid everywhere that we get reports of <laughs> High pressure, spray. 30 bars, and you've got uh, yeah. I mean, I Arizona just, uh, in the summertime. You know, LA, or out or over the Brago Desert, desert where it's normally completely dry. So, excuse me, do you think that I'm part of the conspiracy? No, we're not no, saying that. Not we just conspiracy. want information. It's this global... Well, this There's is something else going on there besides cotton To come trail. forward and do studies to prove what we already know so we can get a published in Science magazine. You, but th the way you do science is you gather data and you analyze the data and you need a lot do of you data. You not just need for anecdotes. Us? Will you come and work for us? Because uh, we have no money to pay scientists to do the research that needs to be done. You know how I get money? I write a proposal well, and get funded, and the government gives me money if I have a good idea. We're working on it, but so, the government, I don't think, is going to give us money for this. we have contact your office, could you help us put something together? Well, we're just looking for help. Or how to how go about doing that? I mean, I'm so finding yeah. aluminum, barium, strontium, titanium, and tree bark. I just had tested its certified labs. I paid for it myself. So, so but I don't know anything Where about are these the chemicals coming? I don't know anything about, about the biology. Of of, how do you know? You have so, water. Because I'm yeah. working with biologists, Department what? of Forestry you biologists. Have water on your land and you cook too well. Just because your information is straight away. We're in our bodies. It's showing up in our blood. What, but th there's there's pollution. There's lots of pollution everywhere, it? but you have no evidence. No, but you can see it falling from the sky. We can see it on pan. I watched it come down. What, did you, what, what was it that you saw come down? They look like they're filaments. I believe Oh, those are serious clouds that uh, would... They drop no, elements yeah, that have yeah. aluminum and barium. I've no, had two samples tested. Uh, aluminum and barium. You have not been... You have not... The lab. serious clouds that we're talking about are sprayed by airplanes. They're chemicals out the backs of airplanes that create large clouds in the sky. That's, I mean, that's your theory, but you it's you not a theory. What about the theory when they yeah. no. have you ever, have We're not China. speaking about normal cirrus clouds that are formed in the natural way. We're speaking about man-made clouds. It's burn, so obvious. When I you mean, burn jet fuel, you get carbon dioxide, water vapor, and traces of other elements. But have you ever gone up no, and sampled when the they clouds? spray them, these are not normal air patterns. They come back and forth. They make Can I ask patterns. You a um, you know, where, where we live in Shasta County, we've been doing uh, tests of, of water and air and rainwater. Even on the side of Mount Shasta, up at the, probably the 10,000 foot elevation, 8 or 10,000 foot, we found uh, extreme levels of aluminum in the snowpack on Mount Shasta. We found it in the rainwater, we found it in the air samples, we found it on the ground in many places that are far removed from any kind of, uh, you know, towns or mining or anything. Thing. We've gone to our local officials uh, to ask them to help, you know, to do their own testing, you know, to our own to our, uh, health, uh, air quality control board, and they just totally dis dismiss uh, uh, what we're doing. How would you suggest? I mean, this is legitimate. I mean, I'm sure that you as scientists would like to know more about this, this uh, extreme aluminum contamination. How would we go about 
first validating. Of, first of all, I would see uh, how these measurements compare to other, uh, to what, what are the actual levels. You can find trace amounts of lots of things that aren't bad for you. So how, how polluted is it? How polluted is it compared to other samples in other places? Well, the, in that, in that, uh, that's the first thing I would do. And then I would look at the literature on long-range transport of air pollution. You can find here in California pollution that was put in the atmosphere in China and blown across the Pacific Ocean and comes out in the rain here. And there are large-scale studies of people with airplanes sure. and ships that measure the pollution in the troposphere. P traces that they've been doing. Uh, but it's, uh, it's not done on, it's, they're not trying to pollute it. They're just burning things without any controls and it gets in the atmosphere and sometimes the conditions blow at long distances. And so you can find it in Hawaii, you can find it uh, even in the West Coast. And so it's not anybody doing anything on purpose, it's just part of pollution. And you're confusing, I think, uh, normal jet contrails and, their, and the additional water they put in that causes clouds to form that wouldn't otherwise be there. And they behave just like clouds, they are clouds after that.